Molecule here with your daily dose of he he helium. What do you do with a dead chemist? You bury him. Hope you thought that was so damn funny. Now on to your regularly scheduled program. Hello, and welcome back to The Periodical, the show where we give viewers the scoop on the latest and greatest developments in science as we know it. My name is Kat Ion, and I'm here with my co-host, Polly Atomic, to talk about a development in medical technology. Hello, everyone. I'm Polly Atomic, and our topic today is 3D bioprinting, specifically for human skin. If you haven't heard of 3D printing, it is just what it sounds like, using a machine to fabricate 3D objects out of specified materials. In the case of 3D bioprinting, these materials come from human cells. Scientists have been working on 3D bioprinting for human organs since 1999 when a human bladder was constructed partly using this technology. The 3D bioprinting created a biodegradable scaffold or outline in the shape of the patient's bladder. Then, cells grown from a tissue sample from the patient were layered on top of that to create a functioning organ. Now, however, with organs like skin, 3D bioprinting can create the entire organ. Now. If you're wondering why this topic is important, allow me to shed some light on the subject. In the United States and all over the world, every day patients sit on the donor list and wait for organs. Skin is no exception to this. Patients with very severe burns may need skin transplants from minuscule or enormous portions of their bodies. Other surgical patients could benefit from the cosmetic aspect of having skin transplants that match their own skin. Natural skin is made up of layers, so it makes sense that we can print it in layers and it will still function. To do this, someone can deposit what are called cell droplets of different types of skin cells at whatever spots on the developing skin that they want. In the past, artificial skin has been created by other methods, but the skin did not accurately resemble that of the patient. It lacked things such as hair follicles and sweat glands that the 3D bioprinting method can provide. The use of the patient's own cells to accurately add cells drop by drop to a sample allows the professional to manipulate it more easily. This also aids in creating skin with matching pigmentation or color to the patient. Through this method, skin could be printed to match the receiver almost perfectly and so that it will assimilate to their body as easily as possible. Standardization is also the key to widespread equal care for people all over the country and the world. This technology offers that option for skin fabrication. With a method that is so easy to recreate and simple to carry out, it could be used on a widespread basis if the funding for the machines is obtainable and if the research progresses to make that possible. If there is a standard method, far less people would have to wait for a donor transplant because their doctors could just print them skin. This would be efficient and it would save many lives. Also, when a method is commonly used, the technology can be approved and mass-produced so that there would not be a significant gap between socioeconomic classes in terms of obtaining the technology. Overall, this new technology offers a possible solution to the deaths that come every day all around the world when patients don't receive the donor organs they need. Thank you all for listening today, and remember, we're here periodically for your scoop on all things science.